Welcome to Love at Lunch. Happy Monday. I call it Love at Lunch because I feel like sharing knowledge is a form of love. And today we are talking all things anxiety and how we can manage the feeling of anxiety with a five finger plan. And I will post the five finger plan later on Instagram and uh, Facebook uh, and that outline for how we can handle anxiety better. I'm hearing a lot about anxiety, uh, particularly COVID and that chronic uncertainty has led to a lot of anxiety, period. Um, and some of us have been impacted in different ways. And as we are opening the doors, um, we can experience even more anxiety. So we want to look at five ways that we can mitigate any kind of anxiety. And so the first part about anxiety is oftentimes if we have a feeling that we don't like, we are not welcoming of it. We're just like, I don't want to feel angry or sad, or I definitely don't want to feel anxious. The somatic or body response of anxiety is often elevated heart rate. We feel gross. Our brain is churning around and looping, and it's very uncomfortable. So instead of trying to push away the anxiety, you want to come to a place of accepting oh, hi, anxiety, here you are. And uh, don't attach yourself to it, just like any other emotion that we have a hard time being with, and don't judge it. Anxiety is normal, and you are having an experience. So we want to just acknowledge and accept the feeling for what it is. It is a feeling. Um, nothing worse, nothing better. The next thing we want to think is another A, what's all right right now? And so anxiety is often as a result of what if, you know, what if I go to the doctor and this happens today, my doctor uh, had called me last week and said, your doctor wants to talk to you. I'm like, <laughs> that can't be good. <laughs> so I use some of these skills, um, even as I, went, as I went through that. And they just wanted to make sure that um, they were doing my scans properly for my tumors. So bless them. Good things. But when we feel anxious, we want to think, what is all right right now? We don't want to future surf, go into what if. We want to just stay right now. So what you're doing is anchoring your brain and you're just scanning and you're like, what's okay right now? So that you can ground yourself right now. So what's all right right now? I'm breathing. I'm fine. I'm fed. I'm at work. I'm all right right now. So you want to give yourself something to anchor into what is all right right now so that, um, our brain doesn't future surf and take us to a place of increased anxiety. Then the next part is you want to bind the anxiety. So you want to bind up your thoughts. So I might be thinking, oh man, what does the doctor want to talk to me about? What's going to happen? Is there some MRI result that I didn't get before and I'm going to find out I got brain tumors and we're beginning to end. So I want to bind the, pro the, the, um, the anxious part up as much as possible. So think of wrangling something and you're gonna just make it a little bit more realistic and make the anxious part smaller. So in this case, um, just thinking, okay, I don't have any outstanding tests. I feel good, which is not how we judge necessarily what's going on internally. But, um, and so we're binding the problem. We're making it more realistic. So you want to combat the thoughts with realistic, what is actually most likely realistic. Then the next piece is take heart. Give yourself some compassion. Um, think about that there are other people that are struggling as well. Um, send them some love, reach out to some people. So either sending you some, self some love or sending other people some love, checking in, connecting. Our brain gets some neurotransmitter um, kind of feedback there and it lessens the feeling of anxiety. And then the next piece is that anxiety sometimes can make us feel paralyzed. So we want to take action. And so sometimes we can take action with what's actually going on. Um, and so if that's possible, um, then take action. Let's say you are worried about a health diagnosis. Is there something that you can do to take action? Um, maybe even if it's something that you're worried about a diagnosis, you know, you've had a biopsy and you're waiting to hear back from the doctor. And most often that takes a week or two. And you're like, I'm so worried about my health. 
it's not necessarily going to transform your diagnosis, but is there something right now that you could take action around? And again, from a neuroscience perspective, your brain does not want to just sit there in the flurry of the anxiety. It wants you to do something. And then in return, you get a hit of dopamine, which eases up on that anxious feeling and uh, reduces stress for you. If you can't take action regarding what you are anxious about, take any action regarding anything because you're going to get that same loop in your brain where you get a dopamine hit where you take action. Even if it's very, very small, if you can complete something like cleaning out a utensil drawer or getting rid of five emails in your inbox, your brain is going to give you that same positive feedback. So it's really valuable. One thing, if you're feeling very anxious and you can't take action at all, which can be the most helpful, is pre preemptive action, which means that you do something before the deadline is required. So let's say your taxes are due in the month, and I say a blessed tax accountant on our call today. Um, getting it done early, you get even more positive feedback from your brain, and it will help reduce overall anxiety. So you can support yourself in building a stronger foundation in your brain to be an anti-anxiety trap. I like it. So think about something that you don't have to do for a month or two. Start now. You're going to get even a uh, more bigger bonus. And then the last piece is surrender. That um, maybe it's the circumstance you have to surrender to or surrendering to. Yeah, I struggle with some feelings of anxiety. Okay. Um, and feel like there's a way that you can accept it. I am very visual. Um, and so my surrender piece always uh, really involves the word trust. And so I have a statement that can be really helpful when I'm surrendering to something that I believe that I'll have what I need when I need it. That does not mean I always get the outcome that I want, but I have always gotten exactly what I needed when I needed it. Not necessarily more, but um, it's been enough. The other thing I'm reminded about as the word trust, and this has really helped me when my son had brain surgery and it was literally tearing my heart out. I was so afraid for him. And um, I just looked at the word trust and what came to me is like the you is like a hammock. And my job as a mom, every time I wanted to step in and I was feeling incredibly anxious, was just to hang out in the you and that hammock of the you and trust. And that was my job. So when I felt frantic about the anxiety in that situation is just to hang out. And that was my job. And so that's part of how we work through anxiety too, is that sometimes we can't change things. We do what we can. We move through these five finger of managing anxiety. And then we need to find a place that we can just trust. And so if that's in a place of spirituality, um, you know, believing in God or the universe um, and surrendering to that, um, that can be very helpful in coming to that place of trust. So today, the next time you have anxiety, you want to think of the five part anxiety plan is Number one, accepting. Oh, hi, anxiety. So we don't want to judge or over-attach ourselves to a feeling. It's a feeling. It may pass soon and we turn into something else. So just, okay, anxiety. There's nothing wrong. It's very normal. And sometimes it's attached to something in our past and that our body experiences like a stimulation and we respond with anxiety because that's how we have in the past. And that's okay. That's normal. Most often, it is not about something that is imminently dangerous um, and you want to look around and scan the second finger is what's all right right now. So look around for reassurance that there is safety. There's not everything is collapsing and it's uh, the, everything has to be anxious because anxiety makes us want to pile everything into that anxiety bucket. The next thing is bind up the problem. And so try to uh, take those feelings that you're having and test them against reality. You know, I have somebody that's like, you know, I'm on contract with a large organization doing leadership and uh, talent development, and they want to have a quick call. They, uh, they have a concern. <laughs> What's Leona's anxious brain? You're going to lose this contract. What's the truth? Maybe they need to change up something for tomorrow and it's just way easier to tell me over the phone. So bind up that problem with, with, with what is most likely realistic. The next piece is take heart. So be kind to yourself, self-compassionate, talk to yourself like you would a friend. Also realize that many other people are suffering, not just you. And it's not to say that our suffering doesn't matter, but 
yeah, I'm not alone and suffering is part of life and it can be very hard. Another thing, if you want to feel more love because that the um, hormones and neurotransmitters that are um, uh, emitted when we um, reach out to other people are really valuable, reach out to somebody else and say, how are you? Um, you know, I've been thinking of you. It's really, really good for us and takes our mind off of what feels very intense for us. Then take action. If you can take action, even a small one degree turn, you know, turn of that dial, if it's a health concern, what can you do to become uh, a little bit more focused on your health? Maybe drink some more water, to, uh, change to decaf coffee. Uh, I hate to say that. <laughs> Caffeinated coffee is very hard on your nervous system. So if you feel anxious at all, um, then you want to switch over. Um, then, um, so take action. If you can't take action around what you are anxious about, then anything that you can take action around, cleaning out your inbox, not 180,000 emails, five would be great. If that's your goal, set it and complete it. Uh, clean out your utensil drawer, um, give away something to donate. Any action you can take, if you want the biggest bang for your buck, take something that's going to be a deadline in the future and complete it early and you'll get even more uh, goodies there for your brain. You'd be so happy. Um, and then the last piece is surrender. And surrender to me is trust and taking that you and picturing it, uh, that you in trust as a hammock. And when you feel overwhelmed, you're going to try to table that anxiety and just lean in and surrender. Maybe you have a saying or something that really supports you there, um, that reminds you that you're going to have enough of what you need when you need it, that you've been through hard things before, you can do this, um, and be there and rest. And then rinse and repeat those five parts or decide maybe uh, which one would be most valuable to you and trust your intuition about that. So my hope for you and all the love for you is if you are feeling anxious or you know somebody that is struggling with anxiety, this is a research backed tool to hack into the workings of our brain to reduce that level of stress when we're feeling anxious. So lots of love to you. Hoping your anxiety is low today and your stress is low as well. If I can do anything to help reach out, I'm happy to uh, chat with you and connect and see how I might be able to support you. And um, if you want some more help, not only reducing anxiety, but finding more joy, my book, Finding Your Joy Spot, is coming out July 5th. A birth and a baby book. And it has tools like this that reduce stress, that help you to stay grounded, help you to really step in and be yourself, um, helping you to find different practices that reduce anxiety and increase your capacity for joy. So if you'd like that, I will put the link. You can be part of the pre-release. You'll get some goodies and you'll get up to date. No obligation to purchase. Um, and we will talk next time on Love at Lunch, um, next Monday, Mountain Standard Time, and we are going to talk about how to manage anger effectively, one of my favorite emotions. So lots of love to you in the next week. Take good care.